Hey everybody, it is your friend Keith here on a Saturday night at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in England. And uh, I've got the rarest USA Jackson bass I've ever seen anywhere in the world. I've been collecting Jacksons for over, man, I don't even want to say how long. I'm almost 33 and uh, I bought my first one when I was... 13? So 20 years. Holy smokes. Wow, I've been collecting Jacksons for 20 years. Well, anyway, we're here to talk about this Jackson and why it's very special. Now, if you've been collecting Jacksons and looking at them on online and on eBay and in the, uh, in the stores, you already know what's super rare and crazy unique about this base. Straight off the bat, it's these inlays that are totally insane. This is, I don't know if you want to call it a vine inlay, tree of life, uh, but it's abalone and mother of pearl. And th there's just, I've never seen anything like it on any Jackson. Guitar, bass, anything. It's the only one, it's the only one probably in existence. This definitely looks like a one of, uh, of one piece. I, I've been looking all over Google Images trying to find another one. This is a super low serial number, insanely low, the lowest one I've ever owned and ever seen in person, J0338. That's 1984. That's the second year of production out of the San Dimas, California um, factory. This is the best, best, most desirable, most sought after years from uh, any USA Jackson period. This is the most original when they were at just the height of their fame in the rock and roll and metal era. And uh, th this thing is just so cool in so many different ways. The, the, whoever owned this was a serious musician. What I was told from what little history we could gather is that the jazz bass produced immediately before this was owned by Michael Jackson's brother. Um, whoever bought this had some serious dough because the, the features on it, the hardware, is just incredible. So we've got these active EMG pickups. Early, early EMGs. Look at the font on that. This huge thumb rest. I think you can have your own drag race down this thumb rest. It's super long. Very sturdy too. Everything on this is like built like a tank. The bridge is just rock solid and you've got these really nice brass saddles. Um, something that you can't really see in this video, all I can tell you is that this bass has the nicest pots out of like any instrument of ever had, ever. The resistance on this is like, man, it feels perfect. It just feels so well put together. So, so much weight. When you've got an expensive pot behind these knobs, it feels like there's a 20 pound weight underneath them. And But they still move and they still glide. And that's what these feel like. Whoever buys it will know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, when they say they don't make them like they used to, they don't make them like they used to. So you can see there's some battle scars on this bad boy, as to be expected, because it's older than me. I've got plenty of battle scars. Not just from my days in the US Army, but uh, you know, just from nearly 33 years of life on this earth. And this has me beat by one year. I was born in 85, this was born in 84. So yes, there are some boo-boos, nothing too severe. There's a little bit of, of like lacquer peel on the uh, fretboard, but uh, you know, it's the original fretboard. You've got the original serial number stamped, so it's not an aftermarket replacement. And this is just too cool. You'll never see another one like it. It's, uh, you know, the pattern, I get it. It's not the most metal, most rock and roll pattern, 
but it's just art. It was just some artist at the custom shop wanting to show a little bit of flash and flair, show what they could do with some really nice shell work here. That's super cool. All right, so now let's so show you the back. I don't have the original case. This one's gonna come in a Fender hard case, but those aren't just the only places where the, uh, the features on this bass are so different and unique from all others. Concert basses really aren't that common to begin with coming out of the USA um, custom shop. You know, certainly as a production model, they don't make any USA production model basses. They've got the David Ellefson from Megadeth signature model that's kind of come and gone over the years. We actually have one here that's brand new. It's totally awesome, but it's totally different from this. Look at these tuners. These tuners are insane from 1984. I mean, these look like, I guess kind of, if I had to describe it, like early hip shot tuners. If you've ever seen the hip shot tuners, they're just super well machined. They're very beefy. They look like gears to tank tracks. I mean, that's that's what you want. That's how you can tell an expensive tuner that can hold a string in tune is just when you've got these massive, serious gears and they're almost reflective because they're machined so well and the angles are so sharp on them. It wouldn't be a Jackson if there wasn't some chips on the, on the tip there, just the tip. And then there's a little chip in the, uh, the lacquer here. It looks almost like someone like maybe took a, some sort of marker or not marker, but like a little bit of black paint and just filled the chip. But uh, no, no crack, no neck break or anything like that. Just, uh, you can see the yeah, edge, the chip in the, the finish there. And various little uh, scratches and stuff. Look at the neck heel on the neck through. Look at the evolution of what a neck through instrument is like today versus back then. This thing is thick. Neck through guitars today, I mean, they stop here. So this is a serious piece of wood. Very thick, thick body too. Again, they don't make them like they used to. And this is in the early days of uh, neck through guitars and when cost cutting wasn't such a priority because production numbers were so low. So they really put a lot of attention to detail into making these things awesome. Remember, this is second year of production. You're looking at the 338th Custom Shop Jackson, USA Jackson, ever made that wasn't a Randy Rhodes. The Randy Rhodes have an RR prefix. So aside from the Randy Rhodes models, it's only the 338th uh, USA Jackson ever, which is crazy. And the again, you can never really tell in these uh, cell phone videos, but... still going. The, the resonance on this, the sustain, the resonance is just awesome. So there's two philosophies, I guess, as far as what to do with this thing. You know, you have one of the rarest, one of the first ever USA Jackson concert bases, USA bases ever made in the history of Jackson. You've got probably the only Jackson to ever have this inlay pattern. You know, so what, what do you do with it? Do you keep it the way it is? And it is a kind of like an ode to the 80s. And this is, this is uh, you're just carrying the torch of 30 years of rock and roll history. And we uh, leave it the way it is. Do you refinish it? and try to do what they do with cars. I mean, with, with collectible things, some people are really picky about having the original finish and everything being totally original. 
and you, you see it with cars too. And then you see people that do the rotisserie restorations, frame off, chassis off, restorations, repaint everything, put it all back together, and they still get a million bucks for it. So, you know, I don't know which answer is the best. It all depends on your personal taste. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything to this fretboard. I'd leave it just the way it is. It is gorgeous. And you've got the classic, authentic 80s Jackson logo. This is long before the days of Mother of Pearl logos. You can see what the font looks like right up in person there. So cool. Man, and these, like I said, these tuning pegs are just so thick and beefy and well machined and well made. It's awesome. I hope you guys get a kick out of this. If you've watched my channel, you, you'll see a lot of Jackson videos, and I've said it more than once. Jacksons are just my favorite ever guitars. I've got a deep connection to them. My first ever guitar was a Jackson. I lugged that thing to school every day. I love showing it off. It was a Jackson PS4, Performer Series 4, with a flame top, probably a fake flame top. And then I saved up money and I got a like a 91 Randy Rhodes uh, out of the Ontario factory with a lightning sky graphic. It looked awesome. And uh, yeah, so I've got a strong connection to Jackson's. I love them. And if you love them, you already know how special this bass is. And whoever buys it, I'd love to know what you're going to do with it. I really would. But I'm going to sign off now, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 200 subscribers. I've got to get to 1,000 before they'll pay me. And uh, go over to our Facebook. It's Essex Recording Studios. Go to the search bar. Essex, E-S-S-E-X, -S -E Recording studios and give us a like we're just about 1200 likes there and we are on twitter as well at essex recording at about 900 followers there so really appreciate it guys i've got way more videos coming it's like 8 20 tonight here saturday night i'm gonna be doing these videos till midnight at least cool i'll see you soon